Hello, in this video we want to consider a model and ultimately develop a MATLAB script to simulate the model. So let's consider a model with two components A and B. Each component can either be red or blue. A tries to stay the same color as B. B tries to be the opposite color as A. So first of all, write the state transition functions F sub A as a function of the state of A, the state of B, and f sub b as a function of the state of a and the state of b. Then create a MATLAB script to simulate the states of a and b for 20 time steps. So let's talk about the notation before we get started. s sub a means the state of a. a can either be red or blue. Now when we're programming it's easier to work with numbers instead of strings like red and blue. So we're going to let 0 denote red and blue be denoted by a 1. S sub B means the state of B and this can either be red or blue which will denote as a 0 or 1. So let's think about all the different states that A and B could take on. This notation F sub A means what's A going to do with given input states of A and B. So for example, what's A going to do if A is 0 and B is 0? Similarly, what would A do? What would A flip to or change to if A were 0 and B were 1? Or if A were 1 and B were 0? Or if they were both 1? As a result of working through that, we can come up with the function F sub A is a function of the state of A and the state of B. Then we'll go and do the same thing for B, states of B. So, Okay, so let's take a look at our first piece of analysis. So F sub A of 0, 0. This means that A is currently 0, B is currently 0. And what does A do? A tries to say the same color as B. So if B is 0, that means A is going to make its move and be 0. Okay, what happens next? Well, What's A going to do if A is 0 and B is 1? Again, A tries to say the same color as B. So this means that A will flip to 1. Similarly, if B is 0, A flips to 0. And if B is 1, A goes to 1. In other words, the function F sub A is simply equal to the state of B. Right, look at what's happening here. Whatever the column for B was, that's our output. Okay, now let's go through and do the same thing for F sub B. So we begin with looking at the decisions B will make. If A is 0 and B is 0, what will happen to B? Well, B tries to be the opposite color of A. And so if A is 0, B is going to flip itself and become a 1. And similarly, if A is a 1, B will flip over and become a 0. And so the function F sub B is simply the negation of whatever the state of A is. It's the opposite of state of A. OK, so when you open MATLAB, you'll be here in the default view. And we want to get to our Math 195 folder. You can either double click this or type in CD Math underscore 195. As you can see at the top of the screen, we are now in our Math 195 folder. Let's create a new script. You can either click on New Script or New Script. And I'm going to call this script um, A B Flip Flop dot M. And this is a simulation of a model presented by Sayama. 2015. So this is our course textbook and he presents this in section 4.1. You could even put your name in here. You could even put the date. Sometimes it's nice to even include a, a break so visually you can see the end of the comment section. Okay, so what should we do first? Well, first thing we need to do is we're going to go for 20 time steps. So let's let n equal 20 and this will be our number of time 
steps. By putting that in there at the very beginning of our code, it's it allows us to easily change this in the future to be 100 time steps or 5 time steps. So it just makes our code really nice in the future. I'll put a semicolon at the end to suppress the output. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to define a state for A and define a state for B. And before I write that in my script, I want to show you a few things down here. So suppose I say A equals zeros 1 by 4. Okay, what is that? That pre-allocates an array or a matrix, which is one row by four columns. It just makes a bunch of zeros in there, and then later I could fill it in with my data points. Okay, and so if you change this to be A equals zeros to 5, it's going to totally change what A is, and it's going to be two rows, five columns, and you can also see that appearing over on the left with your workspace. All right, so I'm going to clear all, and I'm going to clear my workspace there. So up in my code here, I'm going to write a comment. I'm going to pre-allocate the size of arrays for A and B. And I'm going to do that by saying A equals zeros, one row by the number of columns. In this case, I want 20 time steps, but maybe in the future I'll change that. So I'm going to call that N columns. So it'll be 20 if it's 20 time steps or 100 if it's 100. Same with B. Okay, so we'll come back later and fill in those values. Okay, let's set the initial state of A and B. And so we'll say A of 1, so this would be the first entry in that long array or that long matrix, we'll say A is going to start off as a 0 and we could set B to be a 1. It doesn't matter what you set them, we'll experiment with that later. Okay, so let me just show you what that code does. If you type in B equals zeros, let's say um, 5, just to play with the code, and then you were to set B of 1 equal to 1, what that does is it fills in a 1 in the first column. Similarly, you could have done b of 1 equals 10 or something like that, and it would fill in a 10 for the first column. Okay, next we need to figure out what's going to happen at time step 2 and 3 and 4 all the way up to n. So let's let 4 time equal 2 up through n. So a at time t well, here comes our function f sub a. a is going to take on the state of b, whatever b was in the last time step. So a copies b in the last time step. Okay, next we need to take care of b. What does b do? Well, b switches its color to be the opposite of a. So if a in the previous time step was equal to 0. Notice I have a double equal sign. That's the logical if it's equal to. So if A in the previous time step were equal to 0, then B will become a 1. Else, if A in the previous time step was equal to 1, B will become a 0. We'll end our if else if statement, and I'm going to put a note here, end the if, else if statement, just so we know what that end goes with. And we're also going to need to end our for loop, so for t, we'll just write that there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, the last thing we want to do is we want to visualize our data. So let's visualize the data. So in this set of code, we're going to plot A. And let's hold on. Let's plot B. Okay, let's just see what happens. So let's save our code. And this was called A, B, flip-flop code. 
let's run it a b flip flop code and we got this very strange picture so what does this mean well let's go to the edit figure properties and let's take a look at a few things here so first of all if we edit the axis properties the x-axis looks pretty reasonable but the y-axis let's try to get a little bit more space around here to see what our graph is really doing does it keep going up or does it just end zero and one well yeah it just goes between zero and one because those are the only states of being that a and b could take on so it's still a little bit hard to interpret what our graph is saying so one problem is that our data is discrete and we really should be plotting our data with dots that can be a little bit hard to interpret visually okay so that gives us a better picture but it's still not entirely clear what is going on with our data so let's go back to MATLAB and try to fix up our script all right so here in the plot area we can put in some extra commands to help us visualize the data so I'm going to put a single quote dash dash this will do a dash line color blue s for square okay so this does a dashed line blue and it puts on a marker which is square for B okay so let's put on a dashed line we'll use R for red and S for square for B let's do a dashed line we'll do blue and we'll do D for a diamond and this is again a dashed line we're plotting in blue and the D is a diamond okay so let's save our code I'm also going to go over here and close our figure the other way you can do that is CLF which clears the figure let's clear all let's clear our workspace and let's run again okay so that looks a little bit better so I can start to see that the data points are actually these diamonds and squares and it looks like the state of A and B are oscillating back and forth I'd still like to control these axes a little bit so if you go help axes MATLAB will show you all sorts of syntax for adjusting those axes so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put it right up here in my script and I'm going to do a X min from 0 up to n that was my number of time steps and then Y min will go negative 1 up to 2 just to give us a little bit of space I could also put in a legend so how do we do a legend in MATLAB let's ask MATLAB help legend and if we scroll up here there's some examples and then the documentation says basically what we need to do is put in a list of strings for our legend okay so there's the documentation let's put that in so string one that will be single quotes a and string two single quotes B let's save it clear the command window clear all the variables and let's run again and that looks better um, we could certainly make a little bit more adjustment we could fill in these markers we could make them bigger we could add axes titles okay so you could add an axis title if you go down here for the Y label this could be um, state which is 0 equals red 1 equals blue for our X axis we could say these are time and this is a discrete time if you wanted to put that in and once you're all done you could go up here and you could save 
your figure in a variety of formats. If you save it as a figure file, you can come back and edit it later. You could also save it as um, a JPEG file or PDF or a variety of other formats.